in a world where two monsters collide, there will be heartache. I will find you! No matter how long it takes, no matter how far! Forgiveness. It's not your fault. <laughs> and possibly a love story, maybe? I wish I knew how to quit you. Uh, maybe that'll be in the sequel, or something, I don't know. 1970 Chevelle vs. 1965 GTO. Nineteen sixty-five Pontiac Gran Turismo Omologato. Mm. <laughs> and this thing's packing a three hundred eighty-nine cubic inch tri-power V eight. And for nineteen sixty-five, that mill was actually up twelve horsepower, now rated three hundred sixty at fifty-two hundred RPM. And that little bump in horsepower was likely related to a revised cam. This car had a compression ratio of ten point seven five to one. And get this. 424 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 RPM. Talk about packing a punch. Why don't you talk into the microphone? <laughs> Inside the GTO, you'll find an absolutely beautiful red interior, and look at that. A stick that you can pull on as much as you like, and you won't even go blind from it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful! But seriously, that's nice. High five. <laughs> Out back, you've got a fairly aggressive set of 390 rear gears, and that should help get this car up and running. The 65 GTO wasn't the heaviest car around, but it definitely wasn't the lightest either. And that's because this car with driver is coming in at 3,710 pounds. The GTO was a pretty good deal back in 1965. The Le Mans hardtop started out at $2,851. The GTO package was another $2,000. 195 bucks. The four speed in this car would have added another $188. Safety track rear was $37. And that ultra cool tri power topping that 389 V8 was another 115 bucks. That gives you a grand total of $3,449. And adjusting for inflation, that's around 29,240 bucks today. In 1965, there were 20,547 tri-power GTOs produced, so it's not terribly rare. Unlike my sense of self-respect. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, thank you. Thank you, you guys. I, I really try. Thank you. 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle. Chevelle, the new high test aroma from Chevrolet. It's magic. While Johnny Depp dries his tears, why don't we take a closer look at this car because I think you're about to get a whole lot more excited. Wait a minute, 454? It's a LS6 450 horsepower? It's got a build sheet, it's the real deal? Layton. Ugh, sorry you guys, I fainted. Like I was saying, this is an LS6 454. We're talking four bolt mains, forged aluminum pistons, forged steel crank and rod, solid lifter cam, aluminum intake manifold, a Holly 780 CFM carb, compression ratio 11.25 to 1. And oh yeah, it's making 450 horsepower at 5,600 RPM. And if that's not enough for you, 500 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 RPM. Did you say LS6? <laughs> Inside, you'll find a very attractive black interior with a column shift three-speed automatic, and you know it's a turbo 400, so it's going to handle all that power the 454 is putting out. 331 gears were standard, but like this car, you could upgrade to a set of 410 gears. And it's a good thing it's got that gearing because this car isn't terribly light. With driver, it's coming in at 3,840 pounds. But remember, it's got an LS6. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. 
The LS6 actually wasn't a very bad deal. The base V8 Chevelle that year was $2,809. To upgrade to the Super Sport 454, that was going to be $503, but that was only the LS5 V8. If you wanted the LS6, that was another $263. Bucks. Turbo 400 transmission, that'll set you back $221. Positive traction was $42. Bucks. And then that ultra cool cowl induction hood was another $147 giving you a grand total of 3,985 bucks and adjusting for inflation, that's around $27,428 today. Including the El Camino and Chevelle hardtop and convertibles, there were 4,475 equipped with the LS6. So maybe not the rarest thing, but definitely not common either. Hot Rod Magazine tested an LS6 equipped Chevelle in May of 1970. It had a 4-speed manual transmission and 410 gears, and it ran the quarter mile in 13.44 seconds at 108.17 miles per hour. 454, your horsepower is going against Lee Harms. This is 1965 Pontiac GTO. It says a tri-power car, 39. Uh, yes, tri-power. And it says 354 horsepower, so hard to say. The 65 GTOs are classic, they're quite essential. 13. And the Chevelle wins the first round, running a 13.25 second quarter mile at 94.64 miles per hour. Meanwhile, the GTO ran a 13.70 second quarter mile at 101.16 miles per hour. Let's check out round two and see if that GTO can even the score. Four miles per hour for the Chevelle, 136, 1965, Pontiac GTO. Uh, that is owned by Lee Harms of Ankeny, Iowa. I got that. So he drove quite a ways. And the Chevelle wins again, this time running a blistering 12.82 second quarter mile at 109.43 miles per hour. But the GTO also showed improvement running a 13.45 at 103.73 miles per hour. And even though the Chevelle has technically already won the best of three shootout, both of these owners were super cool and decided to run a third round anyway, so let's check that one out. The Chevelle. And in the third round, both cars had some major traction issues off the line. But it was the Chevelle that was able to come back for the win, running a 13.61 second quarter mile at 109.07 miles per hour. And this time the GTO ran a 13.77 second quarter mile at 103.57 miles per hour. And I should say that the GTO actually qualified at a 13.09 and the Chevelle a 13.11, so maybe the GTO was having some tuning issues that day. Regardless of who won or lost, it was absolutely awesome seeing both of these cars on the track, so a big thanks to the owners. 1961 at 109.